Yo, 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 what's going on? It's Terrell Hall of Fame, D-Line, TVKC, and all that sweet, beautiful, wonderful shit. Um, this video, you know, is basically um, a response. You know, I put up the video yesterday in talking about the issues that we were seeing going on with dogs in the rings with extremely high rears and um, where it could be extremely bad feed. It could be bad, you know, extremely bad bites. We could, all these different things that are bad and why these dogs should not win and why you would basically want to remove these things. Now, it wasn't to pick on anybody's dog. It wasn't to uh, make anybody feel bad about their dogs. It's just another example that like if, as we start the um, training for the um, judging process, you'll see that our judges are gonna have to be very, very strong to pick dogs that are gonna represent the, big, uh, the breed going forward in a positive light. I'm sorry, if you see a dog that's a championship level dog and um, it has an extremely high rear, that's not a championship level dog. This is not something that we would want to push out towards the rest of other breeds. And you have to think about that also. All of the uh, championship level dogs and big time dogs that will be in this breed, the one thing that we know about that is that they have to go on to best in breed, best in show. So a champion should always be able to represent its own standard at the highest level to compete against other dogs and their standards. Um, an extremely high rear, um, extremely bad feed, extremely bad anything that's against the standard, even if it doesn't say disqualification up front, it's still a disqualification. Um, you know, I've heard the uh, negotiation theories many times that we always say, well, if the dog isn't quite as bad as we thought it was, or, oh, he was an incredible dog except for his high rear. That's not a good enough excuse. Um, we have to look for dogs that fit the standard and fit the standard at a good basis. Now, some dogs will fall into a care, excuse me, category where they have excellent, you know what I mean? That's great, but the very least that we should be accepting for a championship level dog is good. And if your rear is not good, if your front is not good, if there is something on you that is not good, we would have to question whether or not you should be picked to represent the breed as a championship level stud and a stud that's gonna move the breed forward. It's really that simple. Um, like I say, I do this sometimes uncomfortably. I don't like to put people's dogs up there at, in the pictures. I don't like to put people uh, on blast as they call it all the time. I don't like to talk about these things all the time because I do know that even those who have, look at this dude. I do know that uh, even those who have dogs that may not make the cut, you know, as far as my eye and other judges' eyes as to what's needed, they put a lot of work into their dogs. So it's not a mean spirited thing, but this is something that we have to continuously confront right now because the breed is going downhill and eventually it won't be a breed. Let's just put it that way. So, you know, um, don't take it too, badly if it, if you're one of your dogs pops up on these videos or somebody is breaking your dog down or a judge tells you that hey your dog just won't cut it as far as being a championship level dog but maybe your dog is still breed quality just not a championship level dog we have to take the standard of champion back and uh the best way to do that is to have higher standards so with all that being said much love to y'all god bless i will talk to y'all soon peace Peace, I do it.